Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. My name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. This video is the last video explaining the path to enable caching data from Spring Boot to Quarkus application. If you don't have any chance to watch the first and second video, please make sure to watch that first because in the first video we learn uh, how to develop Microsoft's application on top of the Spring Boot and enable caching data to have a high performance. And then in second video, uh, we learned about how to migrate existing Spring Boot application into Quarkus without big change because Quarkus provide uh, Spring API compatibility. But there are just some constraints we learned about that. So this video in a part three, we're gonna learn about how to develop same uh, caching data capability on top of the Quarkus without using Spring Boot. And, but also we still have a good benefit from Quarkus like a native compilation and also we're gonna add more uh, caching configuration like a caffeine or a, a cache visual, et cetera. Okay, uh, so as usual, we're gonna go to code.quarkus.io to generate uh, the sample application here. We're gonna define group name in a artifact name. Let's try to use define quarkus-cache for artifact name and then print some extension like a cache. And then uh, we're gonna expose the rest easy as a default. Uh, and the Quarkus uh, expose the rest easy as a default. And we're gonna select a Jackson to uh, uh, the return the result as a JSON format result. All right, just download that file and uh, extract uh, under the cache demo and open it by ID tool. Let's take a look at that uh, existing uh, project first. The Spring Cache, we uh, developed this uh, Spring Cache project in our first demo. And just uh, take a look at that, uh, we have a uh, uh, the couple of Java classes uh, along with the Spring MVC pattern, and then just try to uh, execute the application based on Spring uh, runtime and uh, using Maven plugin, like a Maven Spring Boot colon run. All right, uh, it takes a couple of seconds to start up, and we have just start up uh, the Spring application. Okay, I'm gonna split terminal window and I try to invoke endpoint http 881 slash weather and the parameter city equal Boston. It takes uh, uh, around six seconds to get the result because we uh, put uh, the slow thing inside the application like using thread slip. And now uh, we're gonna uh, invoke same endpoint at the same time. And the second time we gotta got to super fast because we go to use cache data. So let's try to uh, spring uh, application on top of the Quarkus project. So you can see here the same uh, made the MVC uh, architecture. We just copied it from Spring Boot application uh, project, but we uh, tweak uh, just a little bit, and then we're gonna run this application on top of the Quarkus rather than Spring Boot. You can see uh, we already pulled down uh, required uh, extension on Quarkus and then try to access endpoint 8080 and slash whether the city is sold. It takes uh, almost the same time, like a six second to get uh, the result here from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The, the next three days uh, weather forecast. But second time we when, you, when we invoke, uh, there's no less time, almost zero time, because we just get that data from cache. Now we're gonna go to a new project, Quarkus project, and then just go to copy from uh, existing Spring to Quarkus application project and copy three classes, controller, resource, and Java B. And just to make sure the package passed here, the weather forecast, I'm not gonna uh, change anything at all, uh, except for package name, but go to service, and uh, I'm gonna remove all Spring API compatibility, and then I'm gonna delete the component, and instead, I'm gonna put application scope, because this 
uh, Java class the bin file where we use application scope. And I, I'm going to delete that, uh, the cache uh, stuff. We will add that thing uh, just a li little bit later. And uh, we're going to use the controller, but Parkas doesn't use the controller concept. We're going to just replace the name like a resource and then uh, change the class name and also delete uh, this uh, less controller all came from Spring API. And we're going to use a pass. This is uh, uh, the default capability Quarkus provide as part of the REST EG to expose your uh, endpoint by REST API. And we're going to use the inject annotation for CDI. We're not going to use a private any longer and the get method. And also we're going to uh, return this result response type as a project media type application JSON. That's why I add the Jackson uh, extension uh, when you create our project from code.quarkus.io. And we're going to change the request param annotation to Quarkus param. And one of the benefits of the Quarkus uh, query param in Quarkus application, the, the primitive variable has a default value. For example, long will be default zero, which means we don't need to parse long stuff uh, in Spring Boot application. And also go to application property, we're going to add the Quarkus HTTP port 8082 because I wanted to run at the same time three applications, Spring Boot, Quarkus, and the other Quarkus without Spring Boot. All right. So I just open new terminal window and then uh, change the directory to the Quarkus dash cache project and the uh, execute runtime using Maven Quarkus dev mode. And then uh, the default debug port is the 5005, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to change that 5006 uh, to avoid the conflict, the existing world in Quarkus application. Okay, I'm going to split terminal. But for that, we just see that just a couple of the uh, extension uh, capabilities. So pretty simple and which means it's a smaller file size when you are uh, package this application rather than spring boot on top of the Quarkus. So just try to access the endpoint 8082 a dash weather in the city equal Raleigh. And then we got the same uh, weather forecast next three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we take a six second. And also when you second time invocation, still same result, but uh, still we took a six second. Let's try to add cache capability on top of the Quarkus application. So using cache result here and the cache name weather dash cache, uh, that exactly we use the same cache name in Quark Spring Boot and Spring Boot on top of the Quarkus. And then we just invoke uh, the endpoint once again, but automatically Quarkus auto wired, uh, repackaging, redeploy, rebuild uh, automatically. And then we, now we got uh, got that information from cache, not uh, uh, processing that method and try to uh, add different parameter uh, day in the future equal one, which means the will be returned Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday. And the second time, uh, there's no uh, process time because we just get that information from cache rather than uh, processing the invocation. For example, uh, try to access uh, external system. Uh, let's try to air, there are uh, more the cache uh, configuration like a caffeine. So we can add the caffeine properly, like a maximum size or a limitation, etc. And then you just so you just need to invoke endpoint once again without rebuild, repackaging, restart, restart, and uh, stop and restart your application runtime on top of the Quarkus. That is one of the benefit of the Quarkus. All right, go back to slide. So more caching feature here, so caching annotation, cache result, and you can also invalidate your existing cache or a specific cache, or you can invalidate all existing cache and you can find the specific cache data using cache key annotation. And you can also define and configure cafe in cache uh, using a uh, multiple uh, a property on application property file. Thank you for watching and uh, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are looking for more technical demo tip and example and have a good rest of the day.